Frollo is the app that several thousand single parents say has been life-changing for them in the most profound way. If you're a single parent and want to connect with other single parents and open yourself up to an amazing support network and new experiences, then the Frollo app is the one for you. The Frollo app has two modes, community mode for meetups and holidays, guidance and support, chats and discovery to make it easy to find like-minded local single parents near you. Dating mode is a mindful, safe and respectful dating offering where everybody is there to date another single parent. All users on Frollo are verified, putting our user safety first always. The Frollo app is free to download and use with the option to upgrade to premium for access to lots of additional premium features for an elevated experience, which makes it easier than ever to access the incredible connections and experiences you are looking for. To download Frollo, search for Frollo, F-R-O-L-O, on the app or Google Play Store, or go to www.frollo.com for more info. We can't wait to see you on the app soon. Hi, I'm Zoe Desmond, the founder of Frollo, the award-winning app for single parents that features both community and dating modes. And I'm also co-author, along with my wonderful friend, Rebecca Cox, that I made through Frollo, of the book, How to Be a Happy Single Parent. This season of the Frollo podcast features a series of conversations that include wisdom and guidance from some of the wonderful experts and single parents that feature in our book. We are right at the end of our series of our How to Be a Happy Single Parent podcast. And we've obviously interviewed some wonderful people that feature in the book from experts to various single parents. So what better way to wrap up the series about the book uh, with you and I just having a chat and maybe talking through some of, you know, how the book came to be. And I guess to start at the beginning, I mean, how I remember us connecting, which was back in 2019, we we connected via Frollo. And then I was, you know, a f- kind of fangirling you and your, you know, single parent amazingness and I was thinking wow she looks like she knows what she's doing I need (laughs) to talk to her and I asked you to be on the Frollo podcast the first episode of the Frollo podcast way back when and you very kindly said yes and yeah I'll hand over to you then what happened yeah before I go into that I think it's so funny that you say that that you you kind of look at that you would look at me at that point, because I definitely, especially at that point, did not have anything together. Um, But it's always been something that I've thought about when writing about single parenthood, when like posting on Instagram, because I think for me, and, and I think obviously that gravitated us together because I very much looked at you and thought, wow, look at this badass, like launching an entire business when she's a single mum. Um, And that kind of drew us together. And I think that as much as when you are a bit feeling a bit lost, it's sometimes comforting to see to for for someone else to say, help, I'm also lost. I think for me, what I really needed at some points of the journey was like seeing someone who actually was doing well or that I perceived to be doing well. Um, And I think that, that we both wanted that. And I think that both of our jobs, and and how we've used our kind of positions as single parents is to try and give people a little bit of that feeling of like actually you can be okay um and yeah so I I think that's really funny yeah and it's now that we know each other so well you know we've spoken so many times about how we were feeling back Mm. then and it wasn't the way we feel now Mm. and but I think, yeah, exactly as you say, it's, it, it, you know, I was kind of, yeah, looking, looking at you, um, sort of thinking, oh, she's so, you know, you're living your life, you're doing stuff, you're, you know, you're talking about, you know, some of your struggles, but, you know, positives as well. And so I find that really inspiring. And, but then when we 
did the Frollo podcast and record that session. And before and after we were we recorded, I just remember us, you know, sitting down and having having a chat. And it was, you know, we were quite, you know, open with each other about about our situations. And I think that's that's the that's the magic, isn't it? When you connect with another single parent and you know, it's like you can see how oh, this person is clearly trying to just put one front, foot in front of the other, do the best they can, make the best of the situation with the tools that they have. But also they're just like me. They're finding some aspects really challenging and, and really hard. And, and you know, that's where our connection really, our friendship, you know, really, really started Um which is, yeah, I, I mean, I, I suppose speaking of, of friendships, I know that you and I have a lot of, you know, a lot of, share a lot of the same Frollo friends and, you know, have, have made like lots of, lots of different, um, you know, single parent friends. But how much of an important part would you say that's played in your journey? Oh, it's been absolutely massive. I, I was speaking to someone about the book recently and um, they were saying kind of like what was the the single biggest turning point in your journey to becoming a happy single parent. And I, I think that it was that it was those connections. It was finding other single parents to connect with. Um, and that's also kind of why why we why we spoke about needing the book and why we really worked hard to to get the book out there is because there's nothing more isolating than becoming a single parent especially when you weren't maybe planning on becoming a single parent um and i think that those those early days even if you thought that it, even if you kind of went into it completely planned and 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 knowing that's what you wanted to do I think that it is it's so scary and this it's so overwhelming I think to be kind of the the very title single parent you're on your own you feel so isolated and it I think that kind of stops you from asking to help with asking for help when you need it um and for me when we connected I kind of had had ticked off a lot of the stuff that I, I needed to, to get things in place, but there was a piece missing. And that was feeling like a part of a community, feeling like there were other single parents out there. And as soon as we met, and as soon as we started building our kind of Frollo friendship group, um, and I started meeting other people in similar situations and, and joined various groups for people who had been through similar situations to me, it just really changed the course of of how I felt about being a single mum and therefore my experience of it I think if you if you've got this I think this the stigma and the shame around becoming a single parent particularly if it's through separation and, and that's not how you pictured your life going it's it can kind of really be like that last roadblock um that you need to get over to be genuinely happy I couldn't agree more. And yeah, uh, my single parent friends and connections and support network are definitely for me personally, and I know that different situations are, are, are different, but that has been the biggest key to unlocking my happiness as a single parent and, and how I feel um, because it just, it kind of supercharges everything else as well, because you can kind of sanity check all the other stuff as well, like the finances, like the co-parenting, like the dating, like the sort of, yeah, uh, all of that. So yeah, I, re I really, really agree. And so then with the book, can you remember the first time we ever spoke about the book and how it all kicked off. Yeah, I think, do you know what? I was thinking about this the other day. I think it was honestly on one of our very, very first get togethers um, when we were just having a lunch. And I remember, I think like I'd just written an article that was kind of a, a basic guide to single parenting. And we were talking about that. 
Um, and we both of us were just saying like it's something that we really couldn't believe didn't already exist because it feels like there's a book for everything. Um, and there are some amazing kind of memoir style takes on single parenting um, and some first person accounts, but they're, they're just, it, we, we'd kind of looked everywhere, hadn't we? And we just, there wasn't a guide to being a single parent. Um, and both of us just really immediately were like, we need, we need to make this. Um, and I think with, with our kind of joint expertise and experience I say expertise very loosely from my side because I'm an expert in almost nothing um, well that's why we both decided we needed to bring in all of the experts that we that we did and the different single parenting um, the, you know different types of single parents as well um, yeah because we were like okay all we know is our is our own personal experience we're experts in our own personal experience but yeah you um I think you're an expert you've been definitely full of of wisdom in my life anyway and that's for sure likewise sorry thank you (laughs) (laughs) I think um I think like as you said we 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 kind of got to a like when we started talking about the book if we're being completely honest neither of us were in a position to actually write the book Um, and I think we were still very much in the thick of it, of, of learning how to be a a single parent, how, you know, getting over those last remaining like blocks to being genuinely happy in our situations. And I think we've tried to, in how we've structured the book, in how we've laid it out, we've tried to almost draw upon that experience of the things that you encounter that you need to get into place you know kind of in chronological order I know Mm. people like already people we've spoken to who have read the book have said they've kind of dipped in and out of of various chapters and it's very much kind of in that in that way that you can if if you're not a co-parent you can just skip that chapter or if you've got your finances completely in order you can just skip that chapter but I think we'd got to a place by the time that we actually were working on the book that we knew what kind of issues were going to come up for people. And then I think kind of the last few chapters, really, no matter what stage of your single parenting journey you're at, you may still be struggling with. And I know both of us in in various points are still struggling with. I think like the, from the kind of the stigma chapter onwards, the single parent stigma is just like a massive, massive thing for me. Um, And so much of my writing is around topics of of stigma and shame, because I think they hold us back in almost every area of life, particularly shame and particularly for women. I think there's there's so many things we're told we should be ashamed of. Um, But then kind of like the holidays, there's a lot of single parents who have been single parents for years and still struggle with picking a holiday, having fun on a holiday, you know, what they're trying to get out of that trip. Um, And then kind of self-care, how do you actually look after yourself when you're a single parent and you're very limited on time? Yeah. Um, And then the dating as well. I mean, dating, we could, we, we could talk about dating for hours, probably not suitable for anyone's (laughs) ears. No, I don't think so. Maybe in a future episode when we're (laughs) having, um, sharing a bottle of wine or something, if we're feeling brave. Um, but yeah, I think, I think those, those topics and actually that's why it was so great to have the expert input, um, because, there are, pe- there are people out there that really do know what they're talking about. I mean, like, obviously, Lala in um, in the dating chapters, she's just someone I've got so much respect for. And I mean, I, I, I don't think you should ever take every word from somebody and just take it as law. But it's quite difficult not to do that with her because she's so clever. Um, and she's got so much genuine training and experience in what she's talking about. Um, she just gives such solid advice, but particularly when it comes to safety around dating and looking after yourself. And I think that's something that single parents really, really need. Yeah, I agree. And I think we really are lucky. I feel, I know that we both feel very proud of the different experts that, that feature in our book as well. Um, but just going back to something you said about 
how it was, you know, back in 2019 when we were kind of starting off the whole conversation about the idea of of the book and definitely we neither of us were in a position to get it together to write a book at the time you know we we were so we had so much going on we're navigating so much and um you know we were we were both I think full up full up to the brim as it was but in hindsight it kind of I feel like the timeline was perfect because we are both in a similar timeline that we've been single parents for about six years now so it just gave us that opportunity to go through different stages and experiences and then go forward five steps back two steps you know and 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 things like that so um and I think that really helped with how the book was structured in terms of remembering that feeling of overwhelm and what do I do and at the beginning it's all you know sort of there's there's so much to consider which is why the book starts with with the list and then as you say people can skip forward to whichever chapters apply to them at that time so yeah I think it was kind of worked out quite perfectly in Mm. in in the timeline yeah I think you're right and I think also with the um you know hearing you say that we've been single parents for six years and it's I think that's just like something that I would like anyone who's listening and is like a new single parent and thinks, I think we, we, we say this in the book, but people who tend to try to rush through this part of their life if they're not a solo parent by choice or a single parent by choice. I think sometimes people are like, quickly, how do I, how do I tick off all the things I need to do so that I can move on to the next phase of life, which is not being a single parent anymore. Um, and I, I felt like that at the beginning. Um, and I think if there's one thing that people take away from the book is, is kind of the hope that, that there is happiness within this phase of life, within this single parenting phase, you know, like, at this point, I'm very much a single parent by choice. I, I could, you know, if if I am well aware of the fact that if I wanted to just find someone, settle down in, in whatever circumstance that could be done, it's not impossible. Um, but this is like an, an active choice to be a single parent at this moment, because I'm so content. It's not, it's not false. It's genuine, you know, me and, and Jack, are both genuinely happy day to day. And I think that it that feels quite impossible at the beginning, doesn't it? You yeah, totally. And I think that is such a key thing to highlight. And it actually, I was thinking, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, and it feeds into this, you know, what did you feel when you, you know, how did you feel about everything when you were at the beginning of your single parent journey versus now? Because you know, I'd love you to answer that, but it's just because I, my, my experience of that question couldn't be more contrasting as well. And whereas it was at the beginning, it was that feeling of, oh, this is the worst thing that could ever happen. And, you know, the shame, the stigma. And I remember in our first podcast episode, we spoke about that and how, of course, there's shame, a feeling of shame because society, the way society has represented or failed to represent single parents. Um, so, yeah, but as as you say, that's the same now. I wear my single parent badge with absolute pride. I am so, I feel, I, I feel genuinely proud of the life that I've created for Billy and I, and he, he, he is, he's, he's proud of it too. And, you know, that's, that's really cool. And I don't, and I think, to be honest, I think there's always going to be a part of me that feels like a single parent, but not in any kind of a negative way in a sort of, you know, in a, in a kind of warrior way, um, in a positive way. So yeah, I'd love to hear your 
what how you felt at the beginning versus now yeah I mean pretty much exactly the same um almost identical feeling of just this is the worst (laughs) this is the worst thing ever which for me is in hindsight with hindsight that is bonkers because my mum was a single mum throughout my entire childhood and I had such a lovely happy content childhood and she was an amazing mum and I don't know why I don't know why me becoming a single mum felt in any way like a failure when I couldn't see my mum's parenting as as any, you know, it's completely the opposite in my eyes. She was an amazing parent and I had a lovely childhood. So it doesn't make logical sense that my being a single mum for for my child would would then equate to me being a failure. But as you say, the, the kind of messaging that we still receive around single parents, um, the lot in life that you and your children will have if you if you take that route and the representation of those characters in in almost every tv program film in the newspapers you know the the representation of single parents is kind of across the board bad but i think the more and more work that i've done in this area it's just another one of these situations that kind of economically and politically suits the narrative of because economically it's very difficult to survive as a one parent household simply because life is so expensive so it's kind of convenient if you tell people that it's shameful to be on your own because there's it's just almost financially impossible to make it work that way right so I think that that doesn't mean that making that choice or as is the case for many single parents, having that choice kind of thrust upon you doesn't mean that there's anything shameful about being in that situation. And actually, you have everything you need as long as you can meet the basic needs, which if you can't is not necessarily a choice. It's often kind of completely out of your control. Um, That doesn't mean that you're not providing your child with everything that, that you should be. I'd love to know how you feel now versus that that feeling at the beginning yeah as you can probably hear I feel a little bit more fiery about the whole (laughs) thing now because I just feel a bit sort of like duped that I I only thought there was one option available to me and I think in lots of you know I'm incredibly um passionate about feminism as well and I think that as women we're kind of very very limited still in terms of how particularly when when we were younger of what success really looked like as a woman and and that really was marriage and kids um as the kind of pinnacle of success and I think still that there's lots of messaging around that so if you 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 achieve that and then it kind of disappears I I think I don't think it's it's surprising that you feel like a failure in some way. Um, and now I, I kind of, it's like that has been stripped away and I can kind of see behind the curtain and that was, that was a facade. Um, and actually happiness can be found in complete independence. Um, and I feel like I have zero like zero less and just that didn't even make sense I'm supposed to be a writer (laughs) zero less um I have no less enjoyment from my life as a parent because I'm doing it on my own you know in selfishly often at times I think I get more enjoyment from it Mm. because I get I get my beautiful boy all to myself on so many occasions and we have this such beautiful relationship and this closeness and this shorthand that I don't you know maybe I'd have that if if there was there were two grown-ups in the house maybe we would and and maybe one day we will have that with another grown-up in the house but it's so precious and so wonderful that how could I be anything other than happy and grateful for my circumstance I love that and I identify very hard with everything that you've just said and I was thinking that when it happened for me when the relationship with 
Billy's dad broke down and, you know, beyond, beyond repair. And, you know, when I kind of, which was when obviously I was launched into the single parent thing, I just thought this is the worst. This is my biggest fear. This is the worst thing that could ever happen, which obviously it's so is not the worst thing that could ever happen. Um, and, but I, I guess I had just wanted so much to create that family unit. That was such a dream and it was such a fear that it was going to be, that it was going to fall apart. And, you know, and then I felt like such a failure to Billy as well, that, you know, it, that it only, you know, that it didn't get beyond a year of his his life of having that. Um, but as you say, I feel like the veil has been lifted and it's almost like I feel so grateful that I have come through the other side to see that, you know, it's, I have exactly what I've always wanted, exactly what I've always wanted. It just doesn't look how I thought it was going to look, but I, I have, you know, the support network around me. I have the love around me. I have a beautiful family, you know, and it's okay that it's just me and Billy, you know, for now, that is perfectly okay. And I also really treasure and feel so grateful for the special bond that we have. And I know that you and I talk about some of our favorite things about being a single parent in the book as well, um, where we, where we reflect on, on, on some of that. So yeah, it's a gift. It's a, it's a gift. Honestly, I feel so grateful that the way I felt then versus really my perspective on, on it now is, is so, so different. That's a, it is a gift. You're absolutely right. And I think that, you know, that, that shame and that stigma that we keep talking about is, it, it holds people back from taking the leap when maybe they need to. And almost across the board, everyone that we spoke to in the book who came into single parenthood following a separation said that they wish they'd done it earlier, right? It's, um, it, it's something that people are held back from doing because we're taught that it's not the best option. It's a failure in some way. It's less than, it's kind of the worst option for your child. Um, But so many of those studies and statistics around the plight of children from single parent families are purely economic. It's not that one parent is less able to to look after their child or to provide love and care for their child. It's just purely economic, which is often about how many incomes there are in the house, but it's economic across the board. So teaching people that having one parent at home is somehow not enough is just completely unhelpful because it's going to be this, it's going to be the case for many people, whether or not they want it to be the case. Um, And I think that for people who are in a a terrible situation at home or are raising their children in an unhappy home purely because they've been taught that they should have two parents for their children. Giving those people hope that they can build a happy life outside of that situation, I think is absolutely vital because every single parent that we know has felt so grateful that they've been able to take that leap and they have been able to go on and build a happy life for for them and their children so I think it's just absolutely vital and and I hope that we are kind of able to do that a tiny tiny fraction um with with the book that we've written yeah well we had that really lovely how to be a happy single parent book club the other night and it was so lovely hearing some of the feedback from the people on the on the meetup about how they had you know their their favorite bits of the book or what had been helpful and lots of you know lots of different things came up but i think hopefully what we're helping do is well we're being very honest and realistic that look it's definitely not all 
a bed of roses. There are some hard parts. There are some lonely parts. There are challenges and it's not a linear path, but there are some really wonderful surprises as well Mm. to look forward to. That's it. Also, a bed of roses would be absolutely horrendous, wouldn't it? (laughs) That is is true. Yeah. Maybe it is like a bed of roses sometimes. Yeah, that is good. Yeah, Um, I like that. (laughs) But something also that someone said in that book club, I thought was just so like so positive and so hopeful that actually this would make a great book to give to somebody who needed to become a single parent for one reason or another or that kind of was being held back from becoming a single parent whether by solo parent by choice or you know needing to leave a relationship for one reason or another um it's maybe a great kind of preparation book of like these are some of the things that you you have to think about or that or how you will address those factors and actually a kind of as we said earlier like a message of hope that you can do this on your own um because there are a lot of people that actually would be that that need to do it on their own um and for one reason or another they're too scared um and I think if I kind of wish I'd had this book in those early days of, of taking the leap because I, it just felt so impossible and overwhelming everything that was ahead of us, but now we've done it. It's like easy peasy. (laughs) Yeah. Well, not, not quite, but but it can be really wonderful and really fun and really enjoyable. Um, but yeah, some people mentioned that they had, you know, read the book and like, three days or listen to it on audiobook in three days. And I think that highlights how needed it can be, especially early, you know, in those early days of single parenting where you just want to devour all of the information that you can to make you feel like you're not alone. Your situation is, is seen and, you know, like you can figure out how to put one, one step in front of the other. But I do think it is great to see that already lots of people are buying the book as as gifts for for other people, whether it's a new single parent in their in their life or, you know, somebody who's becoming a solo parent by choice or, as you say, you know, a a friend who's in a relationship that they can see that they, they really need to have the courage to leave but aren't are too scared of 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 what's lying on on the other side yeah I think someone someone who had read the book um who was a new single parent said in our book club didn't they that they had listened to it paint repainting um a room in their house and I just thought that was such a wonderful kind of image of Mm taking control of a situation because I think when you become a single parent particularly unplanned it feels like a complete loss of control and I think that's the scariest thing because you have you're kind of working to a script and to a plan to a certain point and then when that's kind of you know just wiped out all of a sudden overnight it just feels like you've completely lost control of your own story and and that kind of physical and mental taking back control of that by changing something um, and by, you know, listening to an entire audio book in one weekend and repainting a room is just such a nice kind of like, okay, positive action. I'm taking control of something I can control, which might be something as simple as the colour of a wall. Um, and I'm taking a positive step by kind of getting stuck into this and not doing what I did for an entire year, which is just like bury my head in the sand and learn how to like crochet or write calligraphy (laughs) because I felt like that would be useful (laughs) in some way. And and it's funny that I agree. It's such a lovely, you know, such a lovely vision. And that, that person on our, on our book club painting and listening to the audio book at the same time. And wasn't there two people then who kind of, well, there was two people on the book club who, who, almost had parallel experiences they had the same names and they were both painting the same weekend um listening listening to the book so it it was funny that you know 
yeah, it was just funny that, 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 you know, it, and you could see their kind of, yeah, that, the, that, that shared connection and that like, wow, I felt alone and God, there was someone painting, you know, also painting and listening to a book and experiencing what I was experiencing. There's just so many moments of, yeah, just little magic moments that can happen. What, um, what do you think like being a single parent has taught you about yourself? Good question. I think it has taught me that I am completely capable of handling it. You know, I'm, I'm capable of, I'm capable of looking after myself. I'm capable of being a great mom and it's taught me resilience and it's taught me to live my life in a really intentional way, which is such a gift as well. I feel really, really grateful to be to be able to do that and to be able to, you know, create this 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 sanctuary that is my home, which does feel like a sanctuary for for Billy and I, and to, you know, go and yeah, just spend time with the people we want to spend time with and have these experiences that I just don't feel like, you know, I might not get to have if, 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 if I wasn't a single parent or if I hadn't embarked on this, on this journey. So, um, yeah, I think strength, resilience and just being, yeah, just living, living life in, an intentional and authentic way. Mm. I love that. I, I love that that kind of as a statement of of living in an intentional way. Um, and I think it's such a nice, it's such an important point when you are a single parent because I think many of us became single parents kind of unintentionally, and. And then that kind of forces you to, as we've already touched upon, to kind of take control of the situation and realise that actually we are in control of our destiny and we can live in a completely intentional way and raise our children with such intention and um, kind of authenticity um, and in, in a way that we really believe in and that you have complete control over. And there's something so special about that, isn't there? Totally. And it kind of leads me on to a question that I want to ask you as well, which is, you know, what do you hope that Jack is, your son Jack, is, is witnessing through your whole kind of the way you're living your life mm. as a single parent? I think that's, uh, it's so interesting that you say that because I think that um, when we were writing the book, I think the book is so focused on on being a, a happy single parent. And that was, again, this word, intentional, um, because I think so many single parents worry about about their children and they kind of lose sight of themselves in all of that, where it's, is, um, are my children going to be able to be happy with me as a as a single parent? And I think it was so so important to both of us that actually we're teaching single parents that they're allowed to be happy. And they're not it, your entire being isn't now driven towards your ch- your child and your or your children's well-being um and i really really hope that jack doesn't see i think the the image of the single mum that we're so often shown is this completely self-sacrificing kind of martyr who puts their life on hold and just focuses on the kids and so often we're given that as this kind of like that's the that's the role that's the model that's kind of what we should be doing and I could not disagree with that more I'm I hope that I'm showing Jack that 
my entire happiness doesn't rest on his shoulders and I love him and I do everything I can for him. And when I'm with him, I care for him with the absolute best of intention and, and to the best of my ability. But equally, I hope that he sees that I also have a life, that I also have things I care about, that I'm working towards. I hope that, you know, this book is is one of those things that I've I've done it because of him, but I've done it for myself and, and for single parents. And I hope that he sees that you don't have to fit inside a box to have a happy and fulfilled life, that the boxes that society draws for, for, for us and for him in the future, he can break outside of those and, and do whatever he wants. Exactly. Amen to that, sister. And yeah, you took the word out of my mouth. I was thinking before you said it, martyr is the perfect kind of word to sum up the sort of image of the, um, you know, the, the, the single parent. And, and I, I agree with you. That's what I'm hoping that I'm showing Billy through the way I'm living my own life is that, you know, it's just, you know, doing my best, following the things I'm really passionate about, you know, sometimes falling, sometimes failing, getting back up, you know, trying to put my own sort of health uh, you know, prioritize, you know, obviously outside of, of course, Billy is, is you know, goes without saying the, 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 the priority in all of this, but, you know, also hoping that he's seeing me prioritize my own kind of health, my own boundaries, my own understanding, you know, um, my own limitations and, and, and following my own dreams as well. That's so, so important. And, yeah, I think it's really a really cool example that we're setting and getting them prepared for the big old bad world of grown up life. Yeah, you are pretty cool. <laughs> you are pretty cool too, my friend. Very, very cool. Jack is a lucky guy. Very lucky guy. Yeah, we're doing all right, I reckon, on the whole. Yeah, we are. Well, I think that wraps up this chat very nicely and yeah I'm so glad that you know we got it together to get this book out there in the world and I'm yeah I know we say this to each other all the time but I am yeah I'm proud of us and I think it's really cool and I am so bloody glad that yeah, that we found each other. And, you know, it's so nice to have you as, you know, a ride or die on this crazy single parent journey. Likewise, my friend, likewise. Um, Yeah. And, and I just, I hope that the book will, will provide a tiny slice of the support and connection that we've been able to provide to each other over the years. Um, And, you know, one of one of the reviewers of the book said that it was kind of like a friend holding your hand through the whole process. And that's really exactly what we want the book to be, isn't it? Absolutely what we want the book to be. Yeah. So, yes, we would love to hear from anyone who has read the book or wants to share any feedback or even any suggestions about how we could improve any of the information in an updated version um, that we share. So yes, we would love to love to hear from anyone. And you can also connect with either of us on Frollo. And I know it's in the show notes anyway, but do you want to let people know where they can find out more about you, Rebecca? Yes. Um, So you can find me on Instagram at single mother edit. And I always, always love receiving messages um, from people who have read any of my writing, but um, particularly been loving people who have been reaching out saying that they've read the book. Um, So as Zoe said, we'd love to hear hear from you, um, hear your stories and and any suggestions for future editions. Um, But yeah, that's that's where you can find me. 
All righty. Well, that is a wrap for this week's episode and for the How to Be a Happy Single Parent podcast edition. So thank you, Rebecca, for being the you know the 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 lovely last last episode no better fit for it well thanks for having me and as Zoe said you can find us on Frollo and thank you Zoe for making Frollo and bringing us all together oh my god my absolute pleasure thank you everyone for listening and that's a wrap for this week I hope you enjoyed this week's episode If you did, then I have one small favour to ask. Please can you take a minute to subscribe to the Frollo podcast and give us a rating and review. This really helps other single parents who might benefit from it find us. The Frollo app, which is fully user verified for user safety, is available on the Google Play Store and the App Store. And you can find out more info and download links at www.frollo.com or follow us on Instagram at Frollo app. My co-host on this series of the Frollo podcast and co-author of the book, How to Be a Happy Single Parent, Rebecca Cox is on Instagram at Single Mother Edit. And you can purchase your copy of our book, How to Be a Happy Single Parent at all the major book retailers. Until next time, have a great week.